Hello everyone, this is the video lecture for Calculus 1, Section 3.3, .3, Trig Derivatives! As if pre-cal were gone forever? No way! ddx of sine of x is equal to cosine x. ddx of cosine of x is equal to negative sine x. Wow, that was so cool. Uh, these are your staple derivatives that, well, we have to memorize. And that's okay, because they're not really that hard. Uh, what I would like to do is show you what I do. I, I have this chain in my mind. Chain just meaning like a sequence, I guess you can say. And so sine goes to cosine. Cosine goes to negative sine. Negative sine goes to negative cosine. And negative cosine goes all the way back to positive sine. And so wherever you are on this chain, you can just drop down one. That's it. It's actually really easy. Um, and so everyone's happy and wonderful. And then I'm going to give you something that you're not happy with. So the derivative of tangent is equal to secant squared of x. Oh, no. We can't stop there. No way. Because the derivative of secant x is equal to secant x tangent x. Now, this is awesome because you're going to be doing this in calculus 2 and calculus 3 and wherever else you're doing calculus because they can't just always be sine and cosine. That would be too easy. We're going to have to do tangents and secants also. And heck, let's just go ahead and do cotangents and cosecants too. Well, yeah, if they come up, I'll do that. But these are actually really important here. And how I remember these, again, memorizing, I'm focused on memorizing these right now. How many tangents on this line right here, how many tangents do you see? One. Okay, how many secants do you see? Two. Okay, what about this line right here? How many tangents do you see? One. How many secants do you see? Two. Exactly. So they both have... Uh, one tangent, I'm going to write one as in like with letters, one tangent, and they have two secants. There you go. That's how I memorized it. I don't know. Okay. Three, three, zero, four, one. So question number one on your homework is so nice. So I got... 8 sine of t, and they say find the velocity. That is the derivative here. Uh, so derivative of sine goes to cosine. And they say, well, find the acceleration, which is now the second derivative. You take a derivative of this guy, cosine goes to a negative sine. You can just put the negative out in the front. Ta-da! Question number two. 33015 is y is equal to 4x over 3 minus tangent x. Not could they just give me a tangent something variation. They had to make it a quotient rule. <laughs> All right. So as we had already done this, high and low. So low d high, that would just be a 4. Uh, minus high d low. Now, derivative of negative tangent, again, tangent here, uh, is going to be secant squared, so it's going to be a negative secant squared, uh, all divided by the square of what's below. Do not simplify. Do not simplify. You would be wasting your time. Three, three, zero, zero, five. I know that it's a lot to type. Get good at typing, because you're going to be doing it in calculus, too, as well. We got h of theta is equal to theta squared times sine of theta. Of course, theta is basically like x. So if you want to use x instead of theta, I am okay with that. So here we go. We've got my f and my g. So then uh, f prime g plus f g prime. So derivative of this one is going to be a 2 theta. And then we leave this one alone. Plus sign. I leave, or, yeah, yeah. And then I leave the first one alone. And then I take the derivative of the second one. Derivative of sine is going to be a cosine. 
there's nothing to simplify there. Three, three, zero, zero, seven. Oh, we're going to be sitting here all day. So secant theta, tangent theta. Wow, I never saw that one coming. Uh, and so then, what's the derivative of this? Now you're thinking, oh, well, the derivative is secant. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Look, the derivative of a tangent is secant squared. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. It, it's expanding. It's making it bigger. Um, yeah, what's the derivative of a secant times tangent? Well, then you just multiply these two guys. No. Mm -mm. Uh, this is an F and this is a G, and so you know the drill now. Yes, indeed. We're doing some more product rule. So derivative of the first, derivative of secant, is secant tangent. Then I leave the second one alone. Oh, was this supposed to be thetas? Meh. And so then... <laughs> Secant x, and then your derivative of the tangent is secant squared. And so we actually have, in this particular case right here, we got tangent squared theta, secant theta. And on this side, we have uh, secant cubed theta. All right, now you got your thetas back. Ah. Wonderful. Three, three, zero, two, one. I hope that you're seeing this as sarcasm. Um... There is so many questions on your homework, and um, they're not easy. Not, I mean, I'm making them look easy. Uh, they're not easy. I'm just kind of sad that they're not more straightforward at times. But I guess that's kind of why we're wanting to test you. We're trying to say, hey, what if you have crazy situations, uh, especially later in Calculus 2, what should we do, you know? Well, this is a very perfect example of a crazy situation. I actually have two different groups. I have an F and a G. The problem is, is that when I go to G prime, I'm going to have two groups. And so I've got to do product rule with those. So it's like a nested product rule thing, something. Uh, so we'll get to that in a minute. Let's just do it the best way I can. So again, this is F prime G plus F G prime. And we'll deal with that guy in just a minute. So the derivative of a theta is just a 1. Don't overthink it. It's very simple. And then I rewrite the uh, second one. And then I have uh, I leave the first one alone. And now I actually have this derivative thing that I need to figure out. Well, the thing is, is that I need to go and do this derivative on its own. So I've got its own product rule, f and g. And so then its own derivative would be uh, derivative of cosine is a negative sine. And then we got a sine. And then plus, and then I've got, let me scroll this over a little bit. And then I've got uh, my original cosine, and the derivative of a sine is a cosine. And what you actually end up getting is cosine squared minus sine squared. I flipped them on. This is a negative, so I put it on the other side. And that is what goes up in that box there. So here's my final answer. Cosine theta sine theta uh, plus theta times cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Now, I know there's trig identities to simplify that, um, but apparently I didn't. I'm just trying to look ahead here. Mm, yeah, I didn't even simplify it hardly at all. I have a, uh, <laughs> now I see, yes. Okay, so like I was mentioning the trig identities, right? So we got cosine squared minus sine squared. Uh, do you remember that answer? It's not one. Do you remember it? It's something kind of like cosine of two theta, I think is what it is. Uh, so we got cosine of two theta right there. And then this guy here is actually one half of sine of two theta, because uh, everyone knew that. And uh, there's another version of it. I don't think you need to do any of that. I actually, I don't, just don't. I have a little note in my notes here. It says, uh, their answer looks weird. Just leave ours alone. So uh, basically, yes, they're going to convert it. And then they say, oh, well, this guy and this guy can... Blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. Just don't do any of that. Three, three, zero, three, one. 
So I've got y is equal to 12x times sine of x. At least it's x. Uh, it says find the equation of a tangent line. And whenever I see equation of a tangent line, I see um, like three times as long as it could have been last time. And I don't think that's the case here, but well, we'll see. Tangent line at this point. I know that it doesn't say line, but well, whatever. Uh, well, we need a slope. And so I'm going to find my derivative. This is how I group these, actually. So this is f, and this is g. And so then I say my derivative of f, leave the second one alone, leave the first one alone, derivative of sine is a cosine, and there you go. Well, what we need to do is uh, plug in this x equals pi over 2 everywhere. So I got 12 sine of pi over 2, and then I got 12 times pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2. What happens is that this cosine goes away. Sine of pi over 2 is a 1, so we got 12 times 1 is 12, and that's my slope. So now I can actually do y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, and we put it all in. Now, I know it's really weird to have like 6 pi right here. I don't know. I just do what I'm told, and uh, this is what I'm told to do here. So there's your answer. Um, what You know what's actually funny? Let me show you something funny here. Uh, we don't simplify very often, at least I don't. But if you look, that's supposed to be a 2, sorry. If you look here, isn't that a 6? Isn't that a 6? So my answer actually ends up being just 12x. <laughs> wow. All right, cool. So we did it. 3, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And there's a graph. So it looks kind of like this. I don't really know exactly. There's pi over 2 for you. And then we find a tangent line, and it looks something kind of like that. There you go. Okay, cool. 3, 3, 0, 3, 4. Uh, we got f of x is equal to 3. I already did that, sorry. 3 e to the x cosine of x. I group them like this. And so 3e e to the x goes to 3e e to the x. That was my derivative. And then I just recopy it. My derivative of cosine is a negative sine. And uh, I'm, I normally don't simplify, but here we actually should because I've got cosine x minus sine x. So that's my simplified version. I basically just factor this out to the front um, because they want a second derivative now. All right, so second derivative. If you were to try to do this, I mean, it would have worked, but it would just take a while. But notice that we got an f and we have a g, and it's all the same thing, right? So derivative of f, 3e e to the x. Um, so that's my derivative. And then I leave this one here alone. And then I plus, and then I leave this one alone. And then I take derivative here. Well, so derivative of cosine goes to a negative sine. And derivative of a negative sine goes to a negative cosine. Just going down that chain um, each time. And uh, again, you don't need to simplify, but it kind of looks like I could distribute this 3e e to the x to all of them. And so what actually happens is that you have, uh, well, you have two negative sines, and do you have two negative cosines or something like that? Hold on. Oh, no, I got a positive cosine, and I got a negative cosine. So those guys cancel. Uh, but I got two of those negative signs, so negative 3e e to the x sine x, but there's two of them, so erase, erase, erase. Uh, it's actually a 6e e to the x sine x. Um, yes, very good. Cool. How many more do we got? One two, three, four, five questions. Now, there's some long ones in here, but uh, we'll get there. Three, three, zero, three, nine. So, f of x is equal to x minus two sine of x. And they say find x for all horizontal tangents. Okay, so um, horizontal tangents. Uh, and I'm going to specify all, because that's, I know you can't read it, but I, I just said it to you, all horizontal tangents. Um, 
And they say in this problem, they say use n uh, as an integer. Now that's scary. You should remember this from pre-cal, where you got the two pi n answers. Yep, that's what it is. We're going to be doing all this again. Um, and that's actually exactly what I'm going to be doing at the very end here in a second. So don't, don't overthink it. We're going to figure this out together. So horizontal tangents basically mean uh, y prime equal to zero. So I'm going to find my derivative, one minus, and then a negative sine will go to a negative cosine. So yeah, I guess you could just do this here. Set this equal to zero. Let's move this cosine to the other side. So one equals two cosine of x. Uh, divide by the two, I get a half. Uh, and so I'm saying that my cosine value is equal to half. This is my uh, x value on a unit circle. And so unit circle here, uh, we're going to say x value is a positive 1 half. And so up here at 60 degrees and down here at 300 degrees. Of course, they want radians instead. And so we're going to have pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. These are going to be my answers. Solve for x. There you go. I type them in and they go, eh, you're wrong because... Yes, I made my box much bigger. 2 pi n. You have to add the 2 pi n to both of these guys because that's what they want. Um, as for why and all the specifics, I'll just say refer back to my pre-cal videos on this because we went over entire chapters just on this. And I'm not going to go through all that again here. Just go look at those if you really care. Um, this one question on your homework, what, you, what, what do you do? You find your derivative, and you put plus 2 pi in. There you go. All right, so the next ones are talking about limits. And uh, they're special formulas, and I recommend special formulas uh, when uh, applicable. So let me show you how this works. Okay, they say find this limit as t goes to zero of tangent over sine. <sighs> so what do you do? Um, well, first my notes have the numeric method. Oh, we will do the, the good teacher method here in just a second. I'm doing the bad teacher method right now, okay? Uh, so then what I'm going to do is first off, just plug in a really tiny number, 0, 0, 0, 1 for both x's zero 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 one when i did that in the calculator i got four point zero 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 i can't remember after that round to three decimal places i don't know yeah the answer is four exactly uh wow really yeah hey where did you get that four from i don't know at all so um <laughs> i mean there it is uh, but let, let's talk about what's really going on behind the scenes because there are some particulars. Like, let's just say you have this here on an exam, uh, but it's not tangent over sine, it's tangent over cosine. A uh, whole, other, whole other thing. You can't just say it's four anymore. Completely different problem. Um, so let's talk about how this will work. I call this the long way. But before we do that, I need to tell you that we have a special formula, okay? So, like, there's times when I'm going to say, eh, it's just another problem. But this is actually one of those times you should actually pay attention. So, here we go, special formula. Um, the limit as t goes to zero of sine of t over t is equal to one. Now, this is very, very, very special, okay? Um, it's not expected, Normally, when we have this sine t over t business, I don't really know if it goes to 1 or 0 or pi or who knows what, you know. Well, it goes to 1 as long as you're doing this very special thing. Very special. Write it down. Very special. Okay. So let's go back to what we have. And instead of tangent in the top, I'm going to rewrite it as sine over cosine. Now, it still has the 8, so I have to do 8 for those, and then I have big division, and then I have my sign is still in the bottom. Uh, no, they don't all cancel. <laughs> no, they don't. But what I could do is write them in separate fra fractions. So I got sine of 8t 
over 1. And then I've got 1 over cosine of 8t. And then I've got 1 over uh, sine of 2t. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply. I knew everybody was thinking this. I'm going to multiply the first one by 8t. Uh, mm, wait. Nope. Okay, just, just bear with me for a second here. I'm going to multiply everything by 8t over 8t in the end. But I'm going to put an 8 right there, okay? Just hang on tight for a second, okay? 8t, and I'm going to put an 8t right here. So I have a t somewhere still kind of hanging out. Totally obvious to do that. That's supposed to be an 8. Sorry. I don't know if you can even read that. Oh, and that's a multiply. And then apparently I'm going to put a T up here. A 2T? Where did I... Oh, pfft. I know. This is so weird. Just let me write it so I can tell you what's going on with this guy. And then I'm going to multiply it by a half. Okay. Pause. <laughs> Pause. What is going on here? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> this. 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 And this are all new. <clears throat> I'm basically just taking this and I'm going to uh, put these new terms in there. In the end, does everything cancel and simplify back to this guy? Yes, because 8 and 8 cancel, T and T cancel, 2 and 2 cancel. So I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. But man, where did all that come from, right? Well, now I'm going to apply this limit. So uh, this guy right here, actually, you can see that it turns into a 1. And so I got 8 times 1. Over here on this case, if I got uh, t goes to 0, I got cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is a 1. So, I mean, honestly, you don't have to actually do any special formula for him. Um, this one right here is actually my next formula. But notice that it's the flip of this one. They're flipped. Do you see that? And so what actually happens is... I'm saying this thing, same thing here, but now I'm going to flip it upside down. Well, what's 1 divided by 1? Is 1. Very good. And so it's still going to end up being a 1 there. And then times a half. 8 times 1 times 1 times 1 times a half is 4. Yep, we got it. That was a very important question. There are some that I'm kind of like, eh, it's just another one. But this is actually important. This is the strategy. Now, how are you going to create that? <laughs> That's a good question, because I don't know if I would have came up with that myself very easily. Um, I guess I could eventually figure out that I need a T over here. So I need a T down here, so I got a T up on the top. And, oh, wow, I guess I could do something here. And, eh. It just takes experience and seeing it and trying your hardest. That's kind of what we have to do sometimes. So here's another problem. I say theta goes to zero of cosine of theta minus one all over sine and uh, figure out the limit. And so here's another one for you. Here's, uh, here's another special limit. So I got uh, limit as t goes to zero of cosine of t minus 1 all over t uh, is equal to 0. And so the answer here is actually just going to end up as 0. Uh, but this one's a little different. I don't think we use this one so much. That's a nice little formula, but I don't think we're actually going to use it to get the answer here. Uh, what I'm going to do instead, I mean, I might be wrong. I was looking through it before I started recording, obviously, but... Uh, I just did something special. Oh, no, we do use it. We do. Okay, never mind. It's right there. Uh, I'm going to put a uh, theta in both the top and bottom, essentially. Divide both by theta over theta. Uh, well, both of these are special. Notice that this guy is a special 0, and this guy here is a special 1. It's a 0 to 1 is a 0, and that's how we actually got to it. So I'm, I am using this, but I'm using the other one also uh, in order to find it. Again, these are very special problems. Uh, I wouldn't say you see them all the time. I certainly do not remember every formula. Like this one here, I don't remember this one. Not not as easily. I do remember this. This one I do remember. Um, it's just, I don't know, when you do it enough, eventually you memorize some of this. So 
There you go. All right. Uh, sine of x minus 5 divided by x squared plus x minus 30. And they say, find that limit. Well, uh, this is an interesting case study here because what you could do is actually factor uh, the bottom. And when you factor the bottom, it actually ends up being an x minus 5 and an x plus 6, I believe. Yeah. Well, these here are tied with this 5. And see, I'm not going to 0 here. I'm going to 5. But if I plug the 5 in, 5 minus 5 makes a 0. 5 minus 5 makes a 0. So this is that special limit all over again. And so sine of t over t, if you remember, uh, it actually just equals 1. And so then I still got this x over 6 business. Well, I need to apply that 5 into that as well. So 5 plus 6, 1 over 11. Okay, last problem. 3, 3, 0, 2, 0. I've got y is equal to 6x squared sine of x tangent x. So uh, I group these like this. So this is my f, and this big thing here is my g. And so when I start doing my derivative, I got uh, f prime, which would be a 12x, leave the g alone, then plus I leave the first one alone, and then I take this derivative here. So it has its own product rule. And so I'm going to say uh, sine x. Uh, hold on, hold on. Remember, I have to do this again. f prime g plus f g prime. So my derivative of sine is a cosine. My derivative of, and then I leave the second one alone. I leave the first one alone. And then the derivative of tangent. What's the derivative of tangent? Do you remember that one? It's secant squared. So this whole thing needs to go up there. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Not that we messed up or anything. It's just so long. Is your hand hurting from all the writing? Um, mine is. Cosine x, tangent x, sine x, secant squared x. And I'm sure you can simplify the trig part, but totally not worth it. Not when your hand's hurting. All right, that was it. Whew. Thank you very much. And have